Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode. Today we're looking at uh, another 35mm SLR from the 1970s. This time it's the Canon FTB. This replaced the Canon FT and brought about a number of improvements. Quite a nice looking camera. It's available in the black finish as well as this combined black and chrome effect. Aimed at the advanced amateur it uh, ran right the way through until 76 when it was replaced by the Canon AE-1. Right, let's give you an overview. As you can see this one's wearing the um, FD28 2.8 SC. SC stands for Spectra Coating. Uh, there is another version, the SSC, which is the Super Spectra Coating. That is the multi-coated version. This one is only single coated, so it's ideally suited to black and white photography. And it's the FD mount. So unlike the FT, um, which was the, uh, the FL mount, the previous version of the mount. As you can see, this is a later lens. It has the letter A on it. And that doesn't work on this camera. And in fact, you can't select it either. And as you'll know, the... Uh, the breech lock is the feature of the Canon FD mount, so there's no actual moving parts apart from the breech at the back. Quite a good mount. And FD lenses are uh, relatively affordable really. I don't want to say that they're cheap, but they are relatively affordable and quite numerous. And pretty good quality overall. This is a later version, this is sometimes referred to as the FTBN. And the way you can differentiate them is this one has the plastic cover on the end of the wind-on lever and it also has a plastic cover over the PC sync connection down here. A very minor change was to the outside of the shutter speed dial. It has a different kind of pattern on it than the earlier versions. But the easiest way to tell them I think is by the, uh, the plastic rubber sort of grip on the outside of the uh, film advance. On this side, um, we have a depth of field preview and the focusing screen in this is really nice. It doesn't have the rangefinder style um, focusing aid that goes really dark after about f3.5. And it also shows you the full depth of field, even with a 1.2 lens. Um, unlike modern cameras that seem to sort of cut off at about f2 or 2.8, um, this screen will actually show you the true depth of field, even with a 1.2. So really nice to use, especially with fast lenses. You also need to use this feature if you're going to use FL lenses on the camera. And you can also lock the depth of field preview down here. And it also has a mirror up function. So you can put the mirror up out of the way as well. So quite well specified for its time, really. Self timer, self explanatory in operation. Wind on, set your time, push the shutter button, nice mechanical whirring, totally mechanical camera, mechanical shutter, it does take a battery but that's only required for the metering, there we go, quite loud but then all the SLRs are fairly loud, it's got a really nice shutter action and it's got a really nice film advance action and a really well damped um, mirror assembly. Um, it's one of the better cameras with regards to vibration, etc. So you can probably shoot this at a lower speed than you could other contemporary SLRs of the time. We look at the top plate. On here, we've obviously got a frame advance. You can either do it in one long stroke, or you can do it in, you can ratchet it as well. Frame counter, this is self-resetting. We have our... Uh, Shutter release, this is obviously threaded for a uh, cable release and it also has a lock function on it as well. And shutter speeds go, we have B and from one second round to a thousandth of a second. Flash synchronization is the one that's highlighted at the 60th. And if we lift this dial up and turn it around, you can see the ASA range, which is 25 through to 1600. So that's very nice indeed. If you want to do T, if you want to do sort of really long exposures, what you can do is you can set the, the, the shutter speed to B, push 
push this down and then you can lock it and the shutter will stay open for as long as you want until you release this. So it's got a T setting as well, although it's not really indicated on the camera. We have a hot shoe on the top. There is a dedicated flash for this camera that works with certain lenses and does provide with you some degree of metering. Obviously the metering is built into the flash rather than into the camera. And that's what this off position with the flash symbol next door to it means here. Obviously we have a switch here to turn the meter on, meter off and to check. And to check with these you have to set the ASA to 100 and set the shutter speed to 1000. And it's a match needle system in the viewfinder. And you'll see that there's a check mark for the battery. The metering in this one unfortunately does not work. So you can still use it manually with a handheld meter or Sunny 16 or an app on your phone. It's no real big issue. Usual rewind crank. Pull up to open the back. I'll show you the back. There's some instructions for doing the battery check. Like I says, ASA 100 and set the shutter speed to 1000th. That's pretty uninspiring. On the bottom we have a tripod bush right in the middle of the lens, the ideal location, and a push to rewind button here for the film when you finish shooting it. Obviously it's got a couple of lug straps on it. This is where the battery goes. It used to run on the mercury cells, which you can no longer get hold of anymore, so I would suggest a wean cell or a one and a half volt 625 equivalent. So you might need to recalibrate the metering, but I'm unsure about that. Some of the reports I've read imply that this camera, like the Canon EF, has a voltage stabiliser inside of it. So uh, that might not be a case, but I can't check with this camera because the meter doesn't work. That is the overall view. Let's open her up and have a look inside. There we can see the pressure plate. And here we can see the uh, the quick load mechanism. Um, this is designed to make loading easier and all we have to do is pull the film across, just lay it up to the red arrow, just lay it here. This door, trap door, kind of traps the film and then when you close the back you can then wind on and it will take up on the spool automatically. It makes the camera a lot easier to load and compared to a lot of the contemporaries at the time this was a very very easy camera to load. You know me in film loading, it never goes particularly well, so we'll have a bash, see if I can mess it up. And today I'm going to load it with some of this new Kentmere, well new to me, Pan 400, made by Ilford. HP5 Plus is my sort of favourite black and white film. But this is a slightly cheaper sort of film from the same company, but under the Kentmere brand. And I always used to use Kentmere papers in the dark room, so uh, it's quite exciting to see uh, more types of film becoming available. Particularly in the black and white sphere, there seems to be an awful lot more films around now, even when, not, when I was a youngster. Colour negative, not so much, and obviously slide film, that's really kind of disappeared, but hopefully it'll make a comeback. You can't beat projecting images on a wall and a bottle of wine. Right, close that down and that's all you do is you just put the leader across here, you close down the back, that catches the film, close it down and uh, I think the strain is out of that, that's released, I don't want to do that on B, do that on a reasonable speed. So you can see it's grabbed the film, it's that easy to load. It's a, it's a beautiful camera, I'd say totally mechanical, utterly reliable. Um, I'd say this is a later version dating from 73, but I think even the earlier versions, they they're, they're just keep on working. They're much more solid than uh, more modern cameras. The viewfinder is really big and bright. And like I say, with having that screen that you can actually see the depth of field on and you can focus with lenses um, down to 5.6 which you can't do with the sort of the rangefinder type focusing aids. So the A mode doesn't work, that came later on with the uh, other cameras that were discussed, the A series cameras that have come to eBay again coming in the future. But it, you can use it manually, like I say, with a light meter and uh, 
or a phone app works perfectly fine. The shutter is horizontally running. The 60th uh, flash sync speed kind of gives that away. It's um, rubberized silk, what they call cloth shutter, horizontal running. Not quite up to the standard of the uh, the F1, which came out at the same time as this in 1971. That had a, a metal bladed shutter, titanium. But obviously this was a cheaper, um, more affordable camera, shall we say. Doesn't have the removable pentaprism, but to be honest, how often would you use that? This does have a booster. There is a booster that you can put on the top to um, make it more sensitive, to make the metering work with lower light levels. But uh, yeah, very, very good camera, really. Always hankered after one of these when I was at school. There was a friend of mine had one. Well, it wasn't his, it was his dad's. His dad had one of these and an F1, and I was always jealous of him. But uh, yeah, beautiful cameras. Well recommended. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Comments, queries, etc. down below. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.